I'm really interested to talk to you about this whole situation. Now, you're an American, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And you were living where when you were 18, 17, 18, going to high school and all? I grew up in, in Miami. For your bar mitzvah, you went to Israel, correct? That's correct. I went to Israel for my bar mitzvah. It was during the, uh, the second intifada. And so when you made that trip, you went with, was it just you and your parents? Uh, and my sister, yeah. It was a small family trip. Okay. When you were there, you met some Israeli soldiers, correct? Yeah, they're always out and about uh, traveling home from, from base. It's a very small country, so you see them everywhere. You met and talked to some of these guys. Tell me about that and what impact it had on you. Uh, the impact that I had meeting soldiers didn't happen when I was, was 13. It actually happened when I was 18. It was the second time that I had gone, had gone back. Um, what impacted me most as a 13-year-old in Israel was having narrowly avoided the infamous Sabaro bombing. There was a pizzeria uh, that was blown up when I was there, uh, and we had just passed that intersection uh, shortly beforehand. So uh, it there was were my like first... like 15 people killed, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, 15, uh, somewhere around 15 people killed, many more wounded, and it was kind of just looping on the news. Uh, and I was sitting, sitting huddled with my family in the hotel room, uh, watching footage of that. Uh, and that was really the first time that it dawned on me that I, uh, would maybe want to participate in not allowing that to happen again in the future. Even at 13, you thought about that. Looking back, that was like the first kernel, um, that, that, uh, led to me volunteering for the IDF. But yeah, it was when I was 18 and I, I got to like actually meet soldiers who were my age, essentially my peers, who were doing something very different than I was at that age that really pushed me to actually follow through. Yeah. And how long after that second trip was it before you actually joined the military? It was less than a year. That's really an unusual thing. You're an American, you're living in Miami, and you go to Israel and join the armed forces over there. That's a big step. Uh, unusual is the right word for it. Yeah. No, no need to mince words. It's unusual. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd. Uh, I grew up playing video games. I don't like not showering and spending days on end in the dirt without proper food. But, um, the, the idea of protecting the Jewish people was a compelling enough reason to push against who I am, um, and take that leap. What'd your parents think about that? Uh, it's interesting because uh, cause their reaction to my original joining of the military was, I think, more the stereotype, which is that my father was worried but very proud. I think his his pride overtook any fear of something happening. And my mother uh, just cried. She she cried endlessly uh, leading up to, to that first time she watched me leave on the bus. Um, and that changed uh, quite dramatically later on, but we can get to that uh, juxtaposition later. We can hold off. And so how long had you been in when you sustained your injury? The very day that I had finished training, um, which was about nine and a half months into my service, that very day we were sent home on our final weekend leave before we were going to be activated as combat soldiers. And it was that weekend that war broke out on the border of Gaza, and my unit was sent there. So the first thing that I saw out of training uh, was that operation. This is January 8th, 2009. So this is your first day out of training. Yep. Thrown right into it. This was a really big mortar shell that landed near you, and you lost not just an arm, but your dominant arm, correct? Yep. 120 millimeter mortar landed less than a foot away from me. Uh, It has, I believe, a 30 meter kill zone. And there was more than one of them that landed within that zone. We found helmets that were split in half. Uh, Three three fellow soldiers were wounded alongside me. And miraculously, none of us uh, were were killed in action. Um, But yeah, lost my my dominant arm on the spot. Obviously, this had to be a excruciatingly painful, shocking, horrible thing. But you said the thing that 
worried you most was what your mother's reaction was going to be. Uh, have, have you met any Jewish mothers over the years? Yes, I have. So yeah, they, they have a tendency to put the, the fear of God in you, even when you're going through something like this. Yeah. I, was, I was more afraid of her reaction and, and how she was going to find out than what I was going through. Uh, and that actually compelled me uh, when we landed at the, at the hospital, the helicopter landed at the hospital and I saw TV crews trying to capture footage for the news. And I was so scared that she would see me that way. Uh, that I actually like bent down and grabbed a blanket that was resting by my feet. I used it to cover my face. And uh, she did see me on TV, but she didn't know it was me. And that's the only reason that we're able to do this interview today, because she would have killed me. <laughs> yeah, she would have finished the job? Yep. I, 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 I'm pretty confident that that's the case. So how did she find out? I'm sure you at some point had to tell her. And how did you tell her? And what was her reaction? Uh... She, the way she found out was, was just as dramatic, unfortunately. Um, she got a knock on the door, and there were three officers standing outside. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, here in the U.S., when that happens, it usually means that your, your, your son or daughter has already perished. And that was her initial thought. Um, and to make matters worse, she barely spoke Hebrew, and they didn't speak any English. And they showed her a piece of paper, and on the paper... Uh, the only words in English were were wounded or critically wounded. And she just fell apart. And fortunately, one of the officers who was beside my stretcher when I was being rolled into the hospital was able to connect us over the phone. So I spoke to my mother even before I went into surgery. While I was bleeding out, I already had a battlefield amputation. Uh, I was able to talk to her. And uh, even more than that, I was able to calm her down. I told her to listen to my voice. I asked her if she could hear that I was actually okay. And uh, I asked her if she could be strong for me. And uh, she calmed down immediately. And ever since, uh, I mean, I mentioned that there was a, a drastic change in my parents' reaction when I decided to go back. And, and that's what I mean, is I've never seen her cry about it again. Um, she, she seems to have become stronger through what happened and my father's the one who is constantly trying to convince me like why do you have to go back you did enough um he's the one who seems to have taken on the role of of being more afraid you said there was a battlefield amputation yeah it wasn't done by the the medics it actually was done by the munition itself so they just controlled the bleeding everything that they could at the time and how long was it before they got you into surgery there was so much blood that the first tourniquet that they put on slipped off, um, which is, that was probably the most painful part of the whole experience. Tourniquets are, are painful even in training. You have to train on how to put them on. And even then the pressure is tremendous. But when you have an actual amputation and they're tightening on that wound and then it slips off, um, that was probably the, the, the most brutal element involved. Um, so it took two of those. And a lot of lying. I lied to every medic that I, I came across. Every time they changed over hands, I kept telling them that uh, I didn't get morphine yet. So I was like way, way overdosed, uh, which I'm sure you, you wouldn't be happy about, you wouldn't recommend. Um, but at the time, it, it felt like a great idea and uh, definitely changed the feeling at the moment. I'm sure it did seem like a good idea at the time. And uh, apparently it worked out because you're here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm okay. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm all right over here, but uh, otherwise I, I survived it. <laughs> 